This is x. x is a variable. That should be telling you already at least one thing, and that is x can represent a lot of things. Now that we know this, we can play the game that many math textbooks love. Find out who x is. If the book tells you x is a dog, that has narrowed the possible values of x. From the universe of all the stuff, we are now in the smaller universe of dogs. If the book also says x is a movie character, then that clue allows you to narrow a little bit more the things that x can represent. Nevertheless, we still can't know for sure who is represented by x. We need another clue. What happens if the book says that x is named after a famous composer, and x is the protagonist of its own movie? Well, that's enough for us to determine that x is actually Beethoven. This game of finding who x is is fun for a while, but it doesn't allow us to taste the true power of variables. Mathematicians love variables because they allow them to study properties. As a simple example, suppose that the only thing you know about x is that it is a dog. Then, according to Wikipedia, x is a canine. If x is a canine, then that very same encyclopedia tells you that x is a mammal. Given this, x is a living being, and therefore x can kick the bucket. Hence, assuming x is a dog, we have concluded that x can kick the bucket. In other words, the property of being a dog implies the property of being able to kick the bucket. <gasps> can you see it? Even though we talked about x all the time, by using logical principles, we have derived a truth about properties. This, my young viewer, the power of the variables is... Hmm? They allow us to study the properties of things, animals, plants, physical magnitudes, and even abstract objects such as numbers, matrices, polynomials, sets, and variables. In this train of ideas, when in math class they give you the equation x squared minus 4 equals 0, and ask you to solve for x, they are really asking you to play the game guess who x is, and in the process, they are giving you two clues to play. x is a real number, and when you multiply x by itself and subtract 4 units from it, the resulting number after set operations is 0. Hence, your mission. Should you choose to accept it, is to find out from these clues which real numbers satisfy this property. Notice that if multiplying x by itself and taking 4 units from it gives you 0, then taking nothing from it, that is, just multiplying x by itself, gives you 4. In other words, we are looking for a number that multiplied by itself is equal to 4. We know that 2 and minus 2 satisfy this, but are they the only ones? We can answer this by studying the properties of real numbers. If x were a real number greater than 2, or lesser than minus 2, x times x would be greater than 4, that is, this thing from 4. On the other hand, if x were greater than minus 2 and lesser than 2, x times x would be less than 4, which is not the same as equal to 4. Therefore, either x is 2 or x is minus 2, and x cannot be any other real number. Wonderful, don't you think? By knowing a property of real numbers, we have been able to determine with precision which numbers satisfy said property. In conclusion, whenever you see mathematical variables filling an image or a whiteboard, don't be scared! It is best to stop and contemplate the complicated but wonderful message that tiny amounts of symbols can communicate.